Howdy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze. I'd mentioned on my low buy announcement and I'll link that down below that I am a lover of beauty and a lover of fashion. My collection of luxury handbags is on the up and up and I'm trying to make it on the down and down, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna walk you through the styles that I own currently. I have decluttered and gone through and cycled through many, many handbags. I love shopping on the Real Real, Poshmark, or Vestier Collective. I love shopping pre-owned bags because I feel like I can get a better deal on them. You can find really special vintage pieces. You can also find ones that are just harder to source and get a sense of like the history of a fashion house. We'll dive right in in a minute here. I have almost 20 different handbags to show you. They're on my bed here and the more I'm looking at them, a lot of them are not uh, marked with a lot of logos. I post every single Wednesday about beauty, but I'm moving into my decluttering journey. I'm currently in my six month low buy and I've been dabbling in the dark arts of vlogging, decluttering and moving into some fashion content. So you can see those uh, bonus posts on Fridays and Sundays all at 11 a.m. Central Time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really is the best compliment you can give me. But without further ado, let's dive into the handbags. First up, we have a Fendi peekaboo in the mini size, I think. I am not um, a handbag freak in that I know the leather types. I don't know which year these all came out from or who's designed them necessarily. I'm, I'm really appreciative of the aesthetics and, and try to follow what I can, but there are just so many iterations of certain handbags that um, I'm not nerding out on every single detail. She's in the mini size. I think this is a special 2019 release, if I'm not mistaken. I bought this off the Real Real. It didn't come with the long shoulder strap that converts it into a crossbody, so I really just use it as a top handle um, lady bag. It's my most lady bag of lady bags. You can hear it rattle a little bit because of some of the hardware, but if I do close it up, you still hear a little bit of that. I don't mind it. I also love that there's some subtle details that you don't see on every single bag, these hinges, and then the nice matching seams, the aged, I think it's calfskin or the aged leather gives it a much more casual look. Inside you do see a contrasting leather. It's not printed with Fendi, so kind of on the down low. I do love a gold hardware, especially when there's so much hardware all together, then I do care more about what tone it is. But you'll see that I have handbags that have multiple different hardwares and I'm, I'm really fine with mixing uh, tones. What I love about this handbag is that I can whip it out. It fits exactly what I need on in both compartments. I can always keep, let's say, my wallet in one compartment and close it up. And then my phone, which I think I will be reaching for more often, or my car keys can go in the other compartment unclasped. So I love the little organizational aspect of this. This one actually came sprayed with a very strong perfume. And I think it's a male leaning perfume and I'm not sure who does that uh, nowadays. I, I haven't bought anything pre-loved that has such a strong smell. And I wish they had listed that in the Real Real, which is where I bought this because it, it can be very off-putting. Luckily, I enjoy the scent. So it actually makes me feel kind of special or feel like I'm leading a double life every time I use this because I smell someone else's cologne. Absolutely adore this. You might have seen this lovely dumpling of a pouch all over Instagram. I actually own this in both a crinkled white and a burgundy because I was trying to convince myself out of buying just the simple black. In the end, and looking through my collection, I do own a lot of black handbags and I do have to tell myself that black isn't necessarily boring. You can see that I have a whole sleeve of basically all black tattoos. I do have one little red guy there, but it's part of my aesthetic and I'm trying to be okay with that. This is the pouch by Bottega Veneta. It is um, under the creative direction of Daniel Lee. I think he really revolutionized and revived this older fashion house. I door Bottega's Entrechiato, their woven leather style of bags. I've admired it from afar for a very long time and I was tempted to buy the 1980 Lauren Clutch, which is much smaller. Um, you can see it also in its beautiful weave. It comes in so many different colors and it has like a little top clasp. I love this because the handle frame actually acts as like a handle and I can clutch it very easily 
just like that. I can also cradle it extremely easily. It fits so much stuff. And even when you stuff it full, it still is very easy to carry. It's not that heavy, but it's a voluminous clutch and it can be very off-putting to some people. Um, I, I can see why people would wonder how this is like a functional thing. And it's less functional if you're just not willing to own a clutch. It's huge. I mean, look at how big it is compared to my head. I could probably wear it like this. Oh my God, this is perfect. I love that this works as a hat too. I'm not precious about my objects, as you can tell. I really appreciate them, but I feel like they're meant to be worn and touched and smushed. They're living their best life. So it comes with this hinge here, I guess in a silver antiqued tone. It doesn't have any indication that it's by Bottega except this blind embossing on the center. It does snap closed and it does have like a very nice magnet that keeps it shut. I find that it really sits well as well. These are pleats that are kind of pinched in and then sewn shut, so these don't actually move. So the shape will always be this gathered, gorgeous looking clutch. The bottom doesn't have any feet to protect it, but it seems like a very sturdy, thick leather. It has a little bit of a grain. I just love, I love this. This is, to me, the epitome of what luxury is. It's a little bit unexpected. It's a little bit oversized and it's about the silhouette. It's about the draping. It has such a luxurious feel. It even smells like leather. It's not in your face, but it's like a mysterious special thing. And I, I love this bag. This is probably one of my favorite bags of all time just for the pure structural aesthetics of it. I owned it also in the smallest size. I think that was too small. It would kind of fit a wallet a phone and then um, my keys, but that was about it. And then it didn't have the same malleability and I didn't feel like I could hold it as easily actually. So I would use that only for special occasions like weddings, but this I feel like I can go grocery shopping with, I can go anywhere with this and it's always gonna just be my squishy companion. Last thing I'll say about this is that I also tried to own the Mansour Gabriel Cloud Clutch in black and flama. On the inside it was red. I loved the idea of that because it had a red inside. It's not a literal black hole. It had a little bit of an arch to the top. I think their magnet was visible. This you can't even see where it's magnetized so it's actually really well wrapped and hidden. The magnet on the Mansour Gabriel I think was a little bit more just like a, a dime. It was a much lighter lamb leather, so it felt much lighter to carry. Didn't love the quality of that, and granted that is like a fraction of the price of this, but it wasn't as thought through and sophisticated as this. You open this up and you actually have a lot of space within. It feels like it opens up to a lovely cavern, whereas the other one, it felt like there was a mouth and then it just kind of dropped in. I don't know if that's making sense, but you have to feel these things to really understand them. The execution and the idea um, to me are unrivaled. We can stay on the Bottega Veneta train. This is from the same creative director, Daniel Lee, and this is their padded cassette bag. She also might have graced your Instagram feeds or your Pinterest boards. This is another one that I saw right when it came out and I was like, this is exactly what I would have wanted to design if I could design a handbag. There are subtle details that make this really special. So this is a glazed outer, but then the inside, it's not lined, so it's really easy to see how beautiful the craftsmanship is. If you look at lesser made or things that are made kind of poorly, the seams don't match up, you have to be very specific with the cutting, the stitching, the way that this strip is actually kind of doing this so that it fits in lockstep perfectly. It's just so special. And then they chose to not glaze the inside, so it has just a nice subtle finish. This little clasp locks in to this. It has like a little envelope situation so it doesn't come off or it doesn't open on its own. Obviously you can just use it and let it flap open like this, but if you want it to shut, it can quite easily. It does come with this strap and you might have noticed it looks like a yield sign here in the United States uh, but I do love that little geometric detail that brings the boxiness out of its austerity 
and this adds a little playful touch that's both 80s, a little bit Pizza Hut. It just has like a little fun flair. When you open her up, she does have a nice narrow space and a pocket inside that you can put your wallet in or whatnot. I love the bounciness of it. I love that it's kind of stuffed looking like a couch. It does look like a chocolate bar. There's so much to this that makes me very satisfied every time I touch it, every time I pick it up. And when I put it on, it just feels like a special touch. Speaking of playful, slouchy things that have a little bit of a sportiness to them, I'm going to introduce you to this Loewe bounce bag. She is gorgeous and really silly looking. This reminds me of the row. They have a double circle ring bag that's very gathered down here, but also has a lot of gathering, like leather gathering that looks like an intestine. So when you hold these, it feels probably very nubbly. I've never touched one um, in the flesh before, but this is the best iteration in my mind because it has a smooth touch and these are extremely soft and light. These are also malleable, so they're not just like a stiff metal ring on the inside. Um, and then it does have two hidden magnets here and here, so that if I just pop it open, you can actually see the magnets here. There's, again, a nice roomy interior. And I guess I love this type of bag that has structure and slouch. I'm learning that that is kind of my MO and what I look for in a bag because I love having something that's structured kind of like this dress. This is by Vince, I bought it secondhand, I think at like a TJ Maxx, but it has something really structured, this mandarin faux collar, this deep slit, and then a nice like straight up and down sleeve, but then it, it billows out and it lets me feel really comfortable. So, so this is my style, it's sporty, this actually is gathered on the bottom too. I can fit my fingers all the way in. Bottom lays inside. It can fit quite a bit and it has this convertible strap as well that's both adjustable and removable. So <laughs> welcome to my Chanel bag. So this is a bag that I actually don't know the name of. Every single one of my bags is pre-loved except the three cheapest ones. Everything that was under 500 US dollars I bought 100% new. Everything else above, I guess I've been sourcing from the real real mostly. Sometimes they don't come with the true original name of a bag and that was the case with this. So I actually don't know what type of bag this is. If you are a luxury lover and have the eye for Chanel, please tell me what this is. It's in between a lot of different styles. The reissue, which I love as a style, I had bought a Chanel reissue in a chocolate brown metallic leather palladium hardware, which is a silver tone hardware, wearing it every day, chain broke. It just snapped and I was able to repair it, but it freaked me out. So I sold it immediately, even though the reissue is probably my favorite Chanel bag. I've been looking for their more original chains. This actually comes in a much more jumbo chain than what you're used to. It might look similar, but it's actually quite chunky and I love it because it seems sturdy. Mademoiselle Walk, which I enjoy because it's not the big CCs. I do stuff this one because it's so voluminous and it has these huge pockets as well that kind of sit like this and I can fit so much in here. I don't love that you have to fit this exactly in and then be able to close it. That's the only downside of this, but then it has the same back flap that's even larger than some of the jumbos. Using this as my only Chanel bag. If you don't know her already, by look, she is an Hermes Birkin bag. There's one size up that feels just big enough to be a tote or an everyday work tote. That size you might see more on Jane Birkin, who's the namesake of this bag, a French icon who is so irreverent with her own bags. She uses the black one, she takes out these straps, she has beads hanging off, stickers on them, she overstuffs them. If you look her up, it's just such a breath of fresh air. I don't know what else to tell you about her because I'm sure if you love um, luxury goods, you might have already seen Birkins aplenty. If you haven't and you're just curious about what a Birkin actually looks like, she actually has a lot of flaps that go over and I just put this part on top, it folds over and then this actually can string in, go into this part, and then this part goes over this turn lock, which can then turn, and then you can always put the padlock detail, and that's how you close it shut. There's a whole system, but it's obviously quite fiddly, 
and I don't ever use it. I could see it as a trunk style bag or a traveling bag and why that would be useful. Again, I am not one who knows exactly what type of leather this is. I'll put it up on the screen because I'm sure I can find out, but it is just a gorgeously made handbag. It's quite hefty and quite heavy, and this bottom part is really structured. Even though it does slouch, this is my perfect tote slash top handle bag. I cannot fit it over my shoulders. I am personally, I think about 130 pounds and five foot four and like a touch. My proportions aren't very grand in any way. I have a long torso. Apart from that, this is the perfect size for me. And it looks a lot like the Fendi Peekaboo. Why don't we go to white? This is my Celine classic box bag. I'm not sure which you call it nowadays. Not sure it if it was called the box bag because it was made out of box leather. She is made out of goat skin. You can see that the grain of this leather is very strong. Goat skin is extremely durable and it has a lot of compartments on the inside. Many people have qualms with this bag because the way that it clasps closed because you have to lift this with one hand and then kind of figure out how this sits into this notch with the other hand and then let go. Even though it has a lot of compartments, you can tell that it has that accordion style. You can fit a lot in, but then you can also see that it wants to keep about that much of space and volume, so you can't really overstuff it and then expect it to close properly. The strap is adjustable. It's only adjustable to very preset sizes. You could remove the strap and use it as a clutch, but I personally would never do that. I owned this in a couple different colors before landing on the white. There was a pony hair one that was pure orange. Next up in the cream category, Capri bag by Bembian. I would love to bring this out to the beach or to travel with. They're most known for their rattan bags. It looks like something you would find as a souvenir when traveling to distant places or somewhere that has that kind of artisanship. Those are made out of jute or some type of organic material. This is made of leather, 1960s kind of retro style. The straps are surprisingly malleable as well and they're soft to the touch. I was worried uh, when seeing this online that this would not feel great in the hand, but they love to lie flat like this and I can hold it extremely easily without it feeling like I'm either damaging the bag or it's not comfortable in my hand. Quite a slim, narrow profile, but I'm sure if I add things to it, it can kind of billow out a little bit like that. But the footprint of it is not that wide. So I enjoy it because some of the basket bags that I've seen are either too wide in the bottom or too wide at the top. They flare out. It's not like a pristine white to begin with. Playing with textures and yikes. I must love top handle bags so much. I'm giving you a lot of things with top handles. This is a Simon Miller bucket bag. She has a leather bottom that's quite structured. You can tell there's probably cardboard stuffed in it but the way that they rolled, seamed this, the way that there's contrast stitching, it doesn't look like there's a seam to the metal. These do click together sometimes, so when I'm holding it, you can kind of hear it. It has such personality for such a small bag. It fits my phone, my wallet, my keys, my sunglasses. It fits a surprising amount. My smallest handbag, it's perfect. Here we have something by The Row, and The Row is designed by Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. Yes, those two Olsen twins. Welcome to the reality where they are true masters at the art of subtle sophistication. You will never see a logo on their work. This is probably as far as you'll go. You can see that this used to come with a strap. I do have the strap, special cream colored canvas strap that's quite sporty. It's very thick seed beaded and brown floral patterns. The bottom of this will adhere to sort of the sides of your body when it's squished against your body, all completely lined. There's an interior pocket, two foam compartments that's trimmed in leather as well. Comes in a 12 size as well, but again, I think the smaller size works best for my frame. You could probably hear this creaking from the reeds. This is a St. Agni tote. I saw this exact tote on Lizzie Hadfield's YouTube. A lot of these types of bags I know that Dragon Diffusion makes similar bags. It's this warm chestnut cherry wood color. This actually is a tag that I can take off. It says micro pack recyclable. And I love using this instead of a canvas tote bag. It's not as wide. Some of Dragon Diffusion's bags are extremely wide. Don't like that look on myself as much. When I imagine my fantasy self, menswear inspired navy blazer suit. Either navy or like a stark white 
all linen. The perfect amount of wrinkles, like a gold necklace on, aviators on, and I'm in Florence, Italy. Searching for the perfect gelato. This bag epitomizes that feeling for me as well. This is an Agnes Badu natural leather. She used to be this rosa blush color and through sun, rain, oils from my hands, just general wear and tear. She is already this beautiful honey-toned color. She will only get deeper with use. This has taken years, you know. I, I don't use this every single day. If I did, I'm sure she would be much darker, boxy, but also minimalist. Nice pocket for uh, both my phone and wallet and a very roomy interior unlined. If you don't know Agnes Badu, please, please look her up. Indie brands don't get enough love sometimes, especially ones that follow the beat of their own drum. The only thing I'll say about this is that the straps are not adjustable. There's absolutely no closures or hardware on this. I don't know if you could wear it crossbody if you were much taller. I was just talking about Stodd, but here is their Bisset bag. The actual reflective snakeskin pattern is just on top of the snakeskin print that's on top of this leather. So it's quite intensively made. Top handle strap that's actually malleable. It's structured enough to hold it kind of like this with not too much in it. It's also quite thick, so it never hurts my hand. It does have a convertible strap that you can hook on to these nice little D-rings here and wear it cross body. Also, it has this drawstring made out of suede and then um, a cotton closure. Or if you don't want to fiddle with that, tuck it in. Neutral and brown, but it has a little bit more interest. It just rounds out my collection. This is a Celine handbag from the Phoebe Philo era. She is in this gorgeous raisin color. It's burgundy, it's purple, it's kind of ox bloody. And it's a surprising purchase for me because I don't wear purple like at all. The silver details also are a little bit off of my usual aesthetic, but this is the first designer handbag that I owned. And I bought this off of eBay many, many years ago. I think it was back in 2012. Travel with this. I love the way that the gussets flap out like wings. It does look like, like a little smile to me. Even though the bottom is a little softer than she used to be, this is a workhorse of a bag. If you look into the history of this bag, there is some detailing that was taken from the original luggage that Celine had come out with. They were known as a luggage house, much like Louis Vuitton back in the day. Um, and so even though like, let's say this strap wasn't functional in this iteration and reincarnation of this bag, back then there used to be a little strap that would close the top and thread through either on this side or the other, um, and they've just carried that forward. I've never found a real use for this in the modern way. This is a huge tote, and some might think that it doesn't age well necessarily. You've seen it on every celebrity arm one time in your life. So there's so much about this bag that historically means a lot to me. I love it. This Loewe puzzle bag in the small size. She is in pure green suede, and there is some black leather trim. She does have a black leather and silver hardware to her. Same with the strap, but you can see there's a tri-colored suede um, that's in jade, emerald, and the striking malachite green. I love the puzzle bag. You've probably seen her everywhere as well. I used to own her in a black color, but I didn't think she was slouchy enough. It was also hard for me to get in and out of the bag because of this top flap. I'm obsessed with green accessories, green jewelry, emeralds, um, and this is just a stunning bag because of the tri, almost like a quad color, right? It has so much personality to it and I think it would go well with my monochrome looks. Love that she has a top handle and an adjustable top strap. Well, that concludes my handbag tour as of 2020. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe down below. And I hope to see you here again. So, adios. Please handle this side up. You got me upside down. Should only
feel this much